एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल माई टूथ स्टडी दिस इज डॉक्टर महक एंड आई एम यर टू हेल्प यू आउट सॉल्व द डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डेंटिस्ट्री सो दैट यू कैन अप्लाई दैम इन योर क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस एज वेल एज यू कैन यूटिलाइज दोज कॉन्सेप्ट टू सॉल्व ऑल द क्वेश्चन वाइल यू अपेयरिंग फॉर योर डेंटल बोर्ड एग्जाम्स सो वी हैव डिस्कस मेनी ऑफ द टॉपिक्स एंड टूडे वील बी स्टार्टिंग अप विद अ न्यूअर टॉपिक आई वुड रादर से एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड अ ट्रिकी वन वाई इम्पॉर्टेंट वन बिकॉज many of the questions appear in the dental board exams from oral radiology which is quite a lot of times comes clubbed with that of the oral pathology since we know now the pattern has changed and now the questions appear more of like a case based form and in case based form basic knowledge about the radiology is a must for everyone so let's dive in into today's video and discuss about the radiation physics which is the basics of the radiology now as you know that we have studied in our uh, pre med schools about the matter the atoms the ne- neutron the protons and electrons so let's just brush up about it. now in the pre med school as we have already studied about what is matter so matter is basically the generation emission and the absorption of the radiation which occur at the subatomic level now let's just discuss by discussing about this model as you can see here now in this model it shows the electron orbits in which the electrons exist and they exist in orbitals around the nucleus which is somewhere here this nucleus and it carries generally a charge of minus 1 now here we are talking about the electrons which are shown here in red color now they carry the charge of minus 1 then comes the nucleus now this nucleus generally consists of protons and neutrons now protons which are here shown as the orange ones now these protons have a charge of plus 1 and mass of nearly 1836 times the mass of an electron then comes the neutron as shown here in this blue color now these neutrons have no charge and are slightly heavier than the protons now there is a principle of ionization now this occurs when accidentally a neutral atom loses an electron that is an electron moves out of its orbit and becomes a positive ion and the free electron is a negative ion. Now coming on to certain radiations which are important. Now radiation is further classified into two types: the electromagnetic radiation, and the second one is the particulate radiation. Now the electromagnetic radiation is basically the movement of energy through space as combination of electrical and the magnetic forces. Now there are two types of theories which further explains it. One is the quantum theory which considers the electromagnetic radiation a small bundle of energies called photons that travel at the speed of light and contain a specific amount of energy. Now the electromagnetic radiations comprise a spectrum of radiations with a varying energy. Now there's also a wave theory which considers these radiations to be propagated in the form of waves. So the wavelength is inversely proportional to the photon energy. The shorter would be the wavelength, the higher would be the energy. As you can see here the all types of radiations and based upon the wavelength which is described here. Now here we can see the wavelength of the visible light. Now the spectrum of these electromagnetic radiations includes the gamma rays, the x rays, the uv rays, a visibly a visible light, then comes the infrared rays, then the further microwave radiations, the radar and the other radiations. Now this gamma rays, x rays and uv radiations have sufficient energy to ionize the biological molecules and are referred to as the ionizing radiation then is the particulate radiation now in particulate radiation basically the atomic nuclei or the subatomic particles move at a high velocity now this is 
clearly defined as an alpha radiation or a beta or a gamma form particles. Now basically alpha form can basically be stopped by a piece of paper. Beta radiation, it cannot be filtered by an aluminium or a wood particle. And gamma radiations, they are stopped basically by the lead particles. Then coming on to discussing the x-ray machine. Now here you can see the x-ray machine with the different parts. First we will discuss about the x-ray tube. Now this x-ray tube consists of a cathode, an anode. Now a cathode is a tungsten filament as you can see here and is a source of electrons within the x-ray tube. Now the molybdenum focusing cup Basically, what it does is it electrostatically focuses all the electrons emitted by this filament into a narrow beam <clears throat> at a small area on the anode known as the focal spot, as seen here, the focal spot. Then is an anode. Now, basically, the tungsten, the target. Now, it converts the kinetic energy of the electrons generated from the filament into X-ray photons. So, the focal spot is the area on the target onto which the focusing cup directs these electrons. As the size of the focal spot decreases, the sharpness of the radiographic image increases. Now, there is also a copper stem which you can see here. Now, this dissipates and reduces the risk of target melting. Then there is also a power supply which is more better explained here. So basically this heat x-ray filament it provides a low voltage current by use of a step down transformer that reduces the voltage of the incoming current. Now controlled by the milliampere switch which regulates the temperature of the filament and the number of electrons which are transmitted. Now coming on to the production of the x-ray the production of the x-rays it is done by basically two types that is the Bremsstrahlung radiation and the characteristic radiation now a high energy electrons produced by the filament basically interacts with the tungsten at the targets resulting in the energy loss which is converted up into heat and the x-ray so as soon as any electron it loses or exit outs of their orbit it releases some energy now that energy is mostly transmitted or it is further reduced to an x-ray radiation and that's how all this working happens now in the bremsstrahlung radiations what we see here which is described this bremsstrahlung is described in this diagram so basically it results from stopping or slowing off the high speed electron at a target. Now, this electron is attracted towards a positively charged nucleus and it loses its velocity. Now, as soon as it loses its velocity, the lost kinetic energy is given off, and this interaction generates an X ray photon with the continuous spectrum of the energy. Now, in the characteristic radiation, what happens is when the electrons from the filament collide with and eject an inner electron orbit and it is replaced by an outer, outer electron orbit. That is from the outside, it moves towards the inner side, an electron and the outer electron exits out. Now, as soon as the shift happens, there is release of the energy and the photon of a specific energy. Now coming on to the factors which control this x-ray beam. Now there are various factors coming on to the first factor that is a kilovoltage. Now this kilovoltage affects both the quantity. Again it is very important to remember it affects the quantity as well as the quality of the x-ray photons. So when the kilovoltage increases the total number of photons produced increases. And the mean energy and maximum energy of the X-ray beam also increases. Now coming on to the milliampere and the exposure time. Now the milliampere and the seconds which is the exposure time affects the quantity not the quality of the X-ray photons. 
so although they can be individually varied the product of the current and the exposure time is used as the parameter to describe an x-ray beam which will be further described in the further upcoming videos so when the amperage and the exposure time increases a total number of photons also increases but the mean and the maximum number of energies they remain unchanged coming on to filtration again very important for the dental board exams it is accomplished by placing an aluminium filter in the path of the beam so for example this is the aluminium filter this is the path of the beam this is the object so reduces the patient dose by preferentially removing the energy so what happens is whenever the source of energy or the extra beam it enters what happens is there are certain energy beams which are also scattered so these energy beams are basically or the ones which are also known as the low penetrating energies or the photons they are basically as described by blue they are removed so they are removed so the patient is exposed only to certain amount of energy the extras is removed so after filtration the total number of photons basically decreases however the lower energy photons are preferentially removed the mean energy of the x-ray beam actually increases so although this is removed this is also removed but the energy of this main beam is increased then coming on to the collimator or the collimation again very important for the dental board exam i'm putting a star over here and also the rectangular collimators which will be further more clearer in the upcoming slides now basically a collimator is a metallic barrier with an aperture which reduces the size of the x-ray beam and the volume of the irradiated patient tissue so what happens is generally a metallic barrier is used it can be rectangular form it can be in the circular form also so dental x-ray beams usually are collimated to a circle of 2.75 inches or roughly 7 centimeters in diameter now the rectangular collimators further limit the size of the beam to just larger than the image to reduce the further unnecessary patient exposure so whenever you ask for the question how to reduce the patient exposure the answer would be using upper collimator and the rectangle shape is the most important one then coming on to the inverse square law or the distance so the intensity which we are talking about here at a given point is inversely proportional to the square of the distance so intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance so more would be the distance lesser would be the intensity so changing the distance between the x-ray tube and the patient has a marked effect on the beam intensity so the principle is also applied to the operator protection where the operator has to stand at a distance of at least 6 feet from the x-ray source to minimize the ray of photons that's why we stand at the 6 feet distance then coming on to the interaction of these x-rays with the matter so basically there are three types of scatterings which occur one is the coherent scattering now in this what happens is when a low energy photon passes near an outer electron the photon ceases to exist and the excited electron for example say over here what happens it it exits out and generating another photon with the same energy at the incident beam so by this activity this interaction is about 8% then coming on to the photoelectric effect then photoelectric effect occurs when a photon collides with a bundle of electron which is ejected from its orbit and the incident photon ceases to exist as you can see here so the frequency of photoelectric interaction is directly proportional to the third power of the atomic number of the absorber contributes greatly to the differences in the radiographic density so this interaction is basically 30% the third part is the compton scattering now in this when a photon interacts with an outer orbital electron which recoils from the impact the incident photon is scattered in the newer direction to lower the energy that's here and this generally accounts for 62% so coming on to the summary of the energy and the exposed doses so there are four things which occur first is the absorption of the radiation second is the exposure time third is the effective dose and fourth is the radioactivity
So there are certain units in which they are calculated. That is the exposure in air karma absorbed. It is the energy absorbed in the air. Then absorbed dose, which is the absorbed energy in the tissues. Then effective dose is the energy absorbed in the tissue times tissue weighing factor. And then is the radioactivity. So this brings us to the end of today's video based on the radiation physics. So briefly we discussed what all is involved in the x-ray, how an x-ray radiation is produced and how it basically works and what are the four factors which are very important. That is the kilo voltage, the current, the time and the distance. In further of the videos we will be discussing one by one about the various topics which are important for dental boards and discussing further about the biology in the radiation. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click on the bell icon so you get an update whenever I upload a video and do follow me on my Instagram. I post questions related to the INBDE and the NDEB and the AFKs. They, they are very helpful, they are very useful in passing the dental boards as well as clearing your concepts. So thank you for today. Do follow me.